Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So I'm in the basement of the retail space today and I am finally getting some good seed starting done. I'm a little behind on the year, that's okay. Everything will turn out fine. Uh, I actually have a bunch of plugs coming from the hoop house. Those will come the end of March and get planted out early April. Uh, but I'm getting started on my seed starting and it's really exciting. I have five trays already done and they're under the grow lights. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna walk you through and show you that. Uh, I also am gonna go through my list and tell you everything that's kind of on the list for this week. But there are two things that I wanna start with you guys on this video today. I'm starting them a little bit different than the normal uh, seed tray starting, so I thought it'd be fun to walk you through that. So the two things that I'm starting today, I'm actually going to be starting just in these meal trays. And the reason I'm doing them in these trays is because they are not going to be growing out their whole seedling life in these trays. Um, the first one is this jar of zinnia seeds. Now these are actually um, zinnia seeds that I harvested from the garden last fall. And I did a video on it. I will link it at the end of this video, but I went around and I documented and saved 10 very different blooms from around the garden, from Benary's Giant, Florette, the Queen Lime series. And uh, the reason that I did that is because I wanted to try and get um, some unique blooms for this year's garden. Um, and also, it's free to save seeds, so why not? Uh, but I wanna do a germination test on these because I've never saved my own seeds from zinnias before. Uh, I think I did it properly. The seeds look good. Uh, so basically, I took a few seeds from each one of those 10 containers. I'm gonna start those today. I'm going to document on the side of the container how many seeds I have started, and then we're gonna see how many come up, and that will give me a very rough a percentage of germination for the seeds that I saved. The other variety that we're gonna start in this video are stock seeds. These also are not going to live their full life in these containers because I'm gonna be potting these up, but I'm only gonna be potting up the ones that are double blooms. And I will explain that when we start those. Um, but first, let's do the zinnia seeds. So I have some pre-moistened seed starting mix in a container on the floor. I'm going to maybe put an inch of soil or so in this container, and then we're just gonna drop the zinnia seeds in here. This is really easy. This is a fast way of starting seeds. Uh, if you're gonna be starting a whole bunch of seeds and potting them up anyway, why not save the time and just throw them in a container like this? All right, so a lot of my seeds, the petal are still attached, so I'm just gonna pull the petal off and the little point um, on the seed that is opposite the end of the petal, I'm just gonna stick that down in the soil. That is how you start zinnia seeds when you put them in soil blocks. So that's what I'm gonna do. And as I do this, I'm gonna count how many I put in the soil. All right, so I'm done. There are 27 seeds in here. Next, I'm just going to mist it in. And then I'm just gonna make sure a couple of the seeds that are popping out, I'm gonna make sure that they are mostly covered with the soil. And then I'm gonna put a lid on the container. This lid acts as the humidity dome. Again, another really easy way to start seeds. Now I need to label it. So I wrote on here, my zinnias, the date, and I wrote the number 27 and circled it. Okay, this is ready to go under the grow lights on the heat mat. Now I'm gonna do two containers of stock. So again, I'm just gonna put some seed starting mix about an inch or so deep. You always wanna pre-moisten your seed starting mix. That just gives you a good base for the moisture and then it's not gonna dry out so quick. Also, when you mist it in, if you don't pre-moisten it, your seeds can settle down under the soil, and if they need light to germinate, then they're not gonna germinate. All right, so the stock that I'm starting, I actually think I'm gonna grab another one of these packets. These are some seeds that I got from the Wholesale for the Small Scale Grower Group that Jake runs. Um, I have three of these packages. I think I'm gonna grab the other two. This is the uh, stock column mix. It says that the germ rate is 86%. There's about 100 seeds in here. Um, these are a couple years old, so my rate's going to actually be less than 86%. 
and I also am only going to be transplanting the doubles. So am I gonna get 40% of this? Um, maybe that I'm gonna be potting up. So I think I'm gonna grab those other two and put them all in here too, but I'm just gonna dump them out into my hand. I need to Google if you surface sew them or if they need to be covered. So, okay, it says barely cover them with soil as they need light to germinate. So I'm just gonna sprinkle them on the top of the soil and then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some vermiculite and I'm just gonna barely sprinkle that over the top. That'll help with moisture, but it will also cover the seeds a little bit. Uh, vermiculite also lets light through um, so it won't co completely cover the seeds. So this is what I'm doing. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle like you're putting salt on your food. That's literally it. All right, this is column mix. Yes, so I have a couple more of these. Now, some of you are probably thinking, whoa, that's a lot of seeds for that small container. Well, yes, it is. And they never would be able to grow their full life in this container. But because I am going to be plucking them out of here and potting them up into cell trays, probably in a few weeks, all I need to do is let them grow enough to see that first set of leaves. Now I'll put some pictures up on the screen. These are from a video that I did a couple of years ago. And when your stock seedlings get their first set of leaves, you can actually tell if they're going to be a single or a double. If your seedling gets the normal two leaves that are not misshapen and separate, that's gonna be a double. If it gets a weird looking misshapen leaf, if it just doesn't look like a normal seedling, that's gonna be a single and I just go ahead and throw those away. Now there are certain varieties of stock that you can get that they say are 90% double and that is awesome. I've ordered those before. Uh, there's a white variety that I believe that you can get. I don't have any of those on hand and so I'm just planting what I have. You can certainly plant all the single ones and they're beautiful in bouquets. They're just not as full and I don't have a ton of space in my hoop house, so I'm gonna choose to only grow the double ones. And I happen to have a bunch of these seed packets. So here's the column mix, that one is done. Now I'm gonna plant the two varieties that I just got from Flower Hill Farm. I got the Iron Rose Pink and the Antique Pink. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I am going to just sprinkle these on the top. There's definitely not as many seeds in this packet, but these are brand new seeds. And so hopefully most of them germinate as opposed to the other ones where I don't know what the germination is gonna be because I've had those quite a few years, I think. All right, sprinkle. And then I'm gonna mist them in just a little bit. Then I need to go grab that vermiculite. So the vermiculite that I have on hand is the burpees vermiculite. This is the fine grade, which is what I like to use. It's a lot smaller chunks. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the top of the soil. It helps with moisture retention. I use this when I start lisianthus because they're in their cell tray so long that this really helps with the algae growth. You can put vermiculite on any of your seed trays. In fact, if you guys watch um, Laura from Garden Answer, if you're watching me, I'm sure you're watching Laura, but she puts vermiculite on everything. You can definitely do that. All right, then I'm gonna mist it in again. All right, I can see all the seeds are settled. Then I'm just gonna put the lid or the humidity dome on each one. Okay, and then label them. I like to use a garden marker. These will not fade like Sharpies will. These are linked in my Amazon link um, down below in the description. Definitely get one of these. So these are stock and I'm gonna put Flower Hill Farm. So I know that that is her varieties. And then I'll write stock column on this one. All right, let's get these on the heat mat and then I will show you what I already have growing. 
All right, so I'm probably gonna look a little dark, but I want you to see what's going on here. On my grow shelf, you can see that I have two different heat mats. These are 10 by 20. I'll show you my other grow shelf and you'll see that I have the 20 by 20 size. They're plugged in and I'm just going to place these containers right on the heat mat. These are the stock that I just did. This is the Xenia that I just did. And this is the stock I did a few days ago. I don't know if you can see that, but the lid is all fogged over. Um, that is keeping the humidity in. So I know that it's doing its job. Then on my other grow shelf over here, you can see I have two trays on the top, two on the middle, and one on the bottom. And underneath these trays, is one of the 10 by 20 grow mats. Um, I can fit two of the cell trays right on here. So these are both a uh, Snapdragon. This is a Snapdragon. This is a straw flower. And on the bottom tray, that is the Barlow Columbine mix. And those will take about 20 days to germinate. And those I do not put on a heat mat. You can probably also notice I have remnants of tulips off to the side. I need to get those all cleaned up today because I'm going to be using these tables probably in two weeks for the next round of tulips. Um, today I'm starting hydroponic tulips and more soil force tulips. Uh, or maybe I'll do that tomorrow. We'll see how the day goes. Uh, also today I need to get my ranoculus started. My ranoculus and anemones for the hoop house. Um, that is on the list for today. So you will probably see that in the next video. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I just wanted to give you an update of my seed starting. And real quick, because I said that I would tell you what is next on the grow list. This week I am also, um, besides doing the ranoculus, I'm gonna be starting some more straw flower. I need to do yarrow, rudbeckia, and fama pincushion flowers. And if my geo seed order comes, I'm gonna be doing my petunias and my coleus for my window box planters. So lots going on. I'll make sure to keep you updated on everything. So I hope you guys are having a great week. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and we will see you soon.